generally speaking, guys, here's what I'd recommend you do if you're about a five or a six or lower. I, I'm going to say six or lower. If you're rating yourself a six out of ten or lower, I'd say just go monk mode. Like this is when you want to disconnect from the sexual marketplace and reallocate your time, effort, resources, and money, all of that stuff within yourself. That's where you're going to get the best ROI throughout your entire life anyway. But rather than going and chasing tail, you need to stop chasing tail and start chasing excellence. Hey, my, my brothers, back again with a short one. This is going to be interesting because this is the manosphere kind of going mainstream. A lot of vernacular that we talk about a lot of things that we talk about are being adapted to the mainstream world. And here's one of them, right? Monk mode. The MGTOWs have talked about going monk a long time ago. Like this has got, uh, I think the MGTOW monks, I first met them back in 2013, I would say. They were a very small group of what we call monks, guys that had checked out of the dating world and gone, gone rogue, gone silent. You know, most of the guys that uh, go, have gone, that went monk, I would say like 90% of them there were older guys, like over 50, had children and grandchildren, had older children and grandchildren, had seen the best of marriage and dating and mating and kind of checked out, right? In other words, as Barbara always used to say, the juice was no longer worth the squeeze. The emotional labor was no longer worth the squeeze. And so... We called it going monk. Now, going monk was either permanent or semi-permanent. And it was meant for older guys that had already been through the ring. It was never meant for younger guys. I remember younger guys used to come to me and saying, hey, man, I want to go monk. I said, man, how old are you? And they said, well, man, I'm 30. I said, man, call me back when you're uh, 50 and we can talk about going monk. I said, I would never recommend anybody going monk before the age of 50. Now, some people have done it, but, you know, that's on them. And it was not a big thing. It was a very small thing until, guess what, COVID. Now, uh, the beginning clip that I played was Rich Cooper explaining what mini monk mode is, okay? That's what we call a temporary monk mode. We call it mini monk mode. And COVID drove a lot of people into what I call mini monk mode. I counseled quite a few people that were in mini monk mode about the, number one, the, the risk going into it. Because if you're an active dater, there are there, well, there's a withdrawal pains that you have to go through when you go through monk mode. I said the first two to three months when you have to withdraw from a female contact, you know, female uh, intimate contact and emotional connection to females because that's what you're giving up. And so just like anything else, like with sugar, alcohol, anything else that you're addicted to or that you've been accustomed to, it takes time to withdraw from it I say about after three months you get through the withdrawal uh, you find out that all that emotional labor the emotional energy emotions and emotional labor is energy that you put out it's thought that you have to put out it's time that you have to put in and you don't realize it because you've grown up with it you've grown up with your your siblings grown up with with your parents grown up with your schoolmates you've gone through that social life to where you're connected you know, it's a give and take, but think there's a lot of energy, time, effort, thought that you have to put out that you don't realize you put in. When you go into mini monk mode, you find out that all that energy, all that time, all that thought, all that labor, emotional labor can be fed back into you if you do it properly. And what, what Rich Cooper has, has just said was that feeding it back into you, if you do it properly, will make you better. It will make you more of a success because... You're not working on everybody else. Or you're not working on trying to fit in or trying to adjust yourself to everybody else. Basically, you're taking care of the needs of what you have. You're focusing on your defects and the areas that you need to prove in or you need to ex accelerate. That's what many monk mode is. And a lot of guys that went through COVID that had to forcibly withdraw found out that this was a viable solution. Now, in this case, what they've done is adapt this, adapt the monk mode, mini monk mode to what I call micro monk mode, okay? Instead of cutting yourself off for three months, six months, a year, they're doing what, they, what I call micro monk mode, where they're 
they're shutting everybody off or they, they're shutting everything off for like a, a two hours, three hours, four hours, right? So in other words, you cut off social media, you cut off basically contact unless it's a really an emergency to even your loved ones. Hey, I'm going to be in mini monk mode or I'm in micro monk mode for a couple hours or three hours. Contact me through this unless it's an emergency. And what they find out is once they stop focusing that energy outward, which is what we're taught to do, they focus that energy inward, they get more done. So now it's become a productivity hack. I think COVID has taught a lot of people, CEOs, entrepreneurs, business people, that isolation can be beneficial. That's why the McTiles call themselves monk. They were going into what, not social isolation, but dating isolation to where that energy can be focused inward. And they found out they have a jump in productivity. So you've seen the hacks that the Manosphere has come up with and brought into uh, mainstream. Mainstream thought is actually being filtered down and actually adapted to certain things. So people poo-poo what we've done. And they poo-poo the, the, the kind of concept that we come up with but this stuff is ancient. All we did with monk mode is basically adapt a monastery to men's lives. I mean, there's always been monks. You know, go back to Egypt. Most of your Egyptian priests were monks. Most of them were. And there's a reason that you do things like that. Like I said, because the energy is inward. The Bible says about uh, being a monk as a, uh, as a disciple. Most of your disciples were not married. They're monks. Why? Because that energy, that thought, that meditation can be focused inward. And it's a very powerful thing. People poo-poo it. Now, the downside for, for, for monk, that's how come the entrepreneurs only do it for two, three hours, and maybe even days at a time. The downside is reconnecting. Because once you cut the energy off, then you have to plug your energy back in. And the downside of being a monk, the downside of going monk, it's not disconnecting. People think disconnecting is the hard part. Contraire. The hardest part, and this is what I've found out for my, not only myself, but for other folks that have gone many monk, many monk mode for three months, six months, even a year. The downside is reconnecting because of a lot of things that when you reconnect, a lot of things that you had resistance to people, crowds, situations, all the other kinds of stuff. When you try to reconnect, it starts to irritate you. That's why I never suggested monk mode or going monk for a young man because there's a certain resistance that you have to have to female nature to be able to put up with them. Just like anything else, it's an irritant. And since we grow up with women, you know, your sisters, schoolmates, mother, aunties, whatever female surrounds you, you get used to the irritation. I'm not saying that it's bad. They don't do it on purpose. That's just being women. And a certain re resistance that you have to have to put up with female nature. Same thing with, with women and male nature. There's a certain resistance that they have to have to put up with us. But the thing is, women know that because women articulate it. Men don't articulate it. Men don't know how much emotional labor that they have to exert to get along with a woman. Women are not aware of how male emotional labors or male emotions show up because it always comes off as either indifference or anger. Sometimes love, but mostly shows up as indifference or anger. And women don't know how to process that. So we wind up accommodating by mimicking female emotions so that they can be comfortable. But that's a lot of work. It's a lot of work to mimic female emotions so that your woman can actually communicate you, but also understand you because they don't communicate male. When, if, when a, you can find a rare woman that can't communicate in male language or male emotional language, they're actually more successful. The, those are actually the women that actually get along with guys. And guess what? Those women don't get along very well with other women, <laughs> which is funny enough, because a woman that can speak male or spell, speak male emotional language, women also irritate them women get on their fucking nerves, okay? <laughs> they do. 
And that's the problem with monk mode, you know, uh, you know it, to, to cut it short. It's a problem with going monk or going in many monk mode. That's how come the entrepreneurs are not going full on many monk mode or monk mode is because the reconnection will be hard and they probably have families and, and kids and stuff like that, they can't do it. So they found a way to actually take the principles and cut it down to bite size micro chunks, which is an hour, two hours, a day, two days. So that that energy, that emotional energy can be refocused back in. So I'm kind of glad that these terms are getting out because one of the most misunderstood concepts in the manosphere, I would say, people think it's incel. I think people understand incels. I think incels have been studied so much that people kind of understand incels. But what they don't understand is monks. Because monks are treated like guys that, that they can't get sex anymore, or guys that uh, can't date anymore, guys that can't get along with women. But the thing is, it's not the case. Most of the guys that have gone monk, that I know, get along quite well with women. I get along quite well with women, believe it or not. Doesn't seem like it, but I, I do get along quite well with women. But the thing is, it's a, for me to, to get along with women, it's a lot of emotional labor. It's an extreme amount of emotional labor. And basically, that's probably why I do get along with women is because I do put in a lot of emotional labor. I have studied women where I can speak with female emotions. And that, one, it makes you attractive to females, to women, but also puts a lot of demand on you because you have to stay in that mindset. You have to expend a lot of emotional energy to do that because it's not a natural state for a male brain. For a male brain to actually speak womanese, it's a lot of effort. Now, there's some guys that can actually do it naturally. Those are your pimps and players and max. I ain't one of them folks even though I play one on TV. But I understand the mechanism, I understand the language enough to where I can, I can actually feed it back to her. That's how come it seems so genuine to her because I, I have adapted my anima to where she translate for me and I can hear what she says and translate it back. So it sounds genuine. And in sense, it is genuine. But it makes you attractive. And when, it, when that kind of emotional labor makes you attractive, that means they want more of it. And uh, it can be kind of wearing. And it got so wearing where I said, you know what, this is too much. And the return on investment was too low. So I said, you know what, let me wrap this bad boy up and go do something else. Now, I know monks that don't invest. We didn't, we're a little bit further along than Coach Greg Adams, where, hey, monks rather pay for it part time than, uh, than deal out emotional labor. And most of the time when we, do give out an emotional labor. It's for free. It's to help people. A lot of monks, believe it or not, do console and consult females. We do. Because we understand them. And once you attach from a female, or, or dealing with female emotional labor, and you get outside of it, and so when you re-engage, you can look at it. Oh, this is what I was doing. Oh, this is what I was giving up. Oh, this is what she was trying to get. So you're looking at it from a detached and a um, impartial manner. So if you observe it as it is without trying to put any kind of conditions or morals or emotions on it, right? You can just look at it. Oh, okay, I, I get this. I get what she's trying to do. I get what she's trying to say. And I get why she's trying to say it. And, and it doesn't make sense, but maybe she needs it. And you plug in. So you look at it from a different way. I remember Stardust said, I shout out to Stardust a long time ago, or Thinking Ape. He said, you can either love women or understand them. He said, you can't do both. Once you give up loving women in that, in that romantic sense, loving them, and you start understanding them, at first it pisses you off, and then what you get is compassion. You get compassion for women, and then instead of loving them like you used to, you love them a different way. You love them for the souls that they are. You love them for being a human being and not necessarily for the, the romantic and sexual being that they are, which is a different kind of love, which is a, what they call agape love, which according to the Greeks is the highest form. Anyway, 
I think I've rambled on long enough about uh, monk mode. Uh, I'm glad to see it in the vernacular. I'm glad to see that it's more understood than it used to be. And I think it's going to become popular and it's going to take the stigma of MGTOW monks. With that, I'm going to bounce out of here. This is BGS out and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.